As the Soviet Vostok 1 spaceflight began its descent back to Earth in April of 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin officially became the first human in space. However, in only a matter of seconds, his module started gyrating uncontrollably. As he looked through the window, he could spot Africa, then the horizon, then the sky. Gagarin was quickly losing vision and getting dizzy, and it seemed like his spacecraft would not survive re-entry. The legendary cosmonaut eventually touched down on Earth safely, but the Soviet Union would closely guard a series of strange events leading up to that historical moment that would only come to light a decade later. Vostok 1 After launching several precursing uncrewed missions between May of 1960 and March of 1961, the Soviets claimed to be ready to send the first man into space. The spacecraft's final design, Vostok, was somewhat rudimentary, with two main components, a descent module with a pilot cabin inside, and an instrument module equipped with a braking engine. On April 12, 1961, at 4.10am, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin boarded Vostok 1. He was relatively calm, chatting with his supervisors and even requesting music on the radio. German Titov, Gagarin's backup, often complained of chest pains, but Yuri was so relaxed that he showed a pulse of only 64 beats per minute, according to official reports. Despite an initial delay due to a malfunctioning hatch, at 6.07 a.m., Vostok 1 took off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The flight's simple mission was to reach the upper atmosphere, make one orbit around the Earth, and come back with a safe landing. While the cosmonaut looked out a small window near his foot, he remained in good spirits, and the flight continued without any significant hurdles. Vostok 1 would successfully beat the Americans and change the world forever. According to official Soviet literature and records, Gagarin and his Vostok landing capsule arrived with the cosmonaut inside it. However, there was no official explanation as to why Gagarin landed on a field where no one was there to greet him. After the flight's report was published by the Soviet Union, several witnesses denied any problems during re-entry and tried to explain the strange occurrence by attributing Gagarin's confusion to adrenaline and the heat of the moment of separation. However, that information was far from the truth, with the real reason being that scientists twice miscalculated where Gagarin would land, and in fact, Vostok had never been designed to land with the cosmonaut inside. The Ugly Truth As Gagarin flew over the North Pacific Ocean, the sun was still down. However, as the Vostok spacecraft crossed the Strait of Magellan at the very tip of South America 23 minutes later, the sunrise was beginning to emerge. Another 25 minutes later, as Gagarin looked at Africa through the small window, the spacecraft's automatic systems adjusted the vehicle into the required settings for the retro-rocket firing and subsequent return to Earth. As Gagarin and the Vostok prepared for re-entry, it was all going according to plan. Until it wasn't. After completing the 40-second burn of the braking engine to slow down the craft and prepare for re-entry, a valve within the braking engine failed to shut entirely, thus leaking fuel. Consequently, the engine ran out of gas and shut down earlier than scheduled, slowing down to 132 meters per second, instead of the planned 136. Although this speed was enough to push the craft towards re-entry, the command to shut down the engine was never issued by the system because of the craft's failure to reach the pre-programmed speed set by the engineers. As a result, the engine's propellant lines remained open after it ran out of fuel and stalled. The pressurized gas and oxidizer then continued to escape through the main nozzle and steering thrusters, causing the spacecraft to spin uncontrollably. While the aircraft was still spinning with no way to stop it, Gagarin was faced with yet another problem. The re-entry module had not yet separated from the service module, which was supposed to happen seconds after the burn ended. The re-entry module was carrying the cosmonaut and was designed to fall back to Earth while the service module burned up in the atmosphere. Inexplicably, the module remained attached and was held together by a bundle of wires. As both parts made their way towards the Earth, the modules finally detached at an altitude of 492,126 miles, and Gagarin's pod settled into the proper re-entry trajectory. 
Descending at extreme g-forces, the cosmonaut's muscles began to tear, and Gagarin fought to remain conscious. Gagarin braced himself and was eventually ejected from the spherical module. His ejection seat then came loose and finally deployed his parachute only 8,200 feet from the ground. Ten minutes after ejecting, the cosmonaut landed safely in an open field with freshly plowed soil cushioning the fall. Landing a whopping 186 miles away from the designated landing site, both Gagarin and the spacecraft ended up southwest of the town of Engels, in the Tarnovsky district, where bewildered locals saw the cosmonaut emerge from the fields. When a local commander of the anti-aircraft division in the area spotted the falling spacecraft, he quickly rushed to the landing site and drove Gagarin to his unit, telling his superiors about what had just happened. Secrets and Lies The International Astronautical Foundation, a non-governmental and non-profit organization, was established in 1951 to provide aeronautical and astronautical activities around the globe. One of its many duties was verifying record-breaking flights through the official guidelines. Back in 1961, the organization established that the pilot had to land inside their craft for a spaceflight record to be valid. This rule, carried over from aviation, became a problem for Gagarin because he did not land inside his spacecraft, which was the intention from the beginning. As a matter of fact, Soviet space engineering experts hadn't yet perfected the braking system that would slow the craft enough for a human to survive the landing, and the cosmonaut was always meant to eject the module. Days after the flight, Russian space program officials filed the official report to the International Astronautical Federation, going to great lengths to conceal the fact that Gagarin did not technically qualify as a record setter. Soviet officials even went as far as making up a spaceport near where the cosmonaut had landed, all while pressuring Gagarin to lie several times during press conferences. The Truth of the Matter German Tito finally got his own spaceflight mission only a few months later and became the second person to orbit the Earth and the first to spend 24 hours in space. But unlike Gagarin, Tito spoke the truth and he owned up to ejecting himself from the module. This confession led to an urgent special meeting between the International Astronautical Federation delegates to re-examine their rules. The result was that the organization finally recognized that the only crucial elements of record-breaking spaceflight were the launch, orbiting, and safe return of the crew, no matter the kind of landing. The first official admission of the truth behind Yuri Gagarin's Vostok 1 landing came in 1971, at a time when his flight had been widely accepted as an international record and two years after his passing in a tragic accident. However, the back and forth regarding the facts of the ever-mysterious Soviet space program do not change the reality of Yuri Gagarin's accomplishment. Vostok 1 was a successful mission that took the world by storm. Thank you for watching our Dark Space video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to this and all our other Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting historical content.